Hello, welcome back. I believe we live in a strange world, a world of a huge paradox. We live in a society where communication is easy. We have tools that only the generation of my, my parent would not be even dreaming of. Uh, and in the same time, we live in a society that is divided there's fragmentation everywhere. A lot of people use the expression of tribalization of the society. That we all belong to a tribe. Uh, for example, being liberal or being conservative. And it influence everything we do. What, uh, what channel we watch when it comes to the news what newspaper we read, uh, who we follow on social media, even the TV show. All of this we do to kind of um, validate our view of the world. We are in some way in an echo chamber. What we say and what we receive from others is often the same. And we like this because it's comforting. And it makes me think, in the Gospel according to Luke, in chapter 15, the Pharisees begin to critic Jesus because he's eating with tax collectors and other sinners. And once again, we need to remember that the Pharisees were the good people, the moral people, the, the good citizen of their society, I would say. And the tax collector, oh, they were not liked. And it's more because they were, it's about tax that almost no one liked. It's more than the tax collector back then were collecting a little more and putting the extra in their pocket. The tax collector were working for the Roman Empire, the occupying force uh, for the land. They were a collaborator. And if you have seen a World War II movie, you have a good idea how collaborators were seen by their own people. So the, the Pharisees were criticizing Jesus. A, a good man can hang out with such despicable people. Well, Jesus' answer, as it's often the case in the Gospel, came under the form of parables. And one of them is the parable of the lost sheep. And for most of us, it's a beloved parable. It's a parable that we love because um, sheep are cute. <laughs> it's, it's important. Uh, and we love the fact that the good shepherd will take this risk to look for the sheep and then will come bring back that lost sheep in the fold. And, and we have this image of the shepherd. I, I'm sure you have seen a version of it. The shepherd carrying the sheep and it's beautiful. Recently I saw a cartoon about this parable and Jesus is bringing back the lost sheep. But the, the sheep is rainbow colored I would say. And as he was rejoining the flock one sheep said, oh he was not lost. We chased him. And it hurt <laughs> because it speaks about us so much. Our struggle to truly accept those who are different. Our struggle to live in the in a place where there's diversity. Our struggle to see I don't know, um, an issue from both sides, the pros and the con. No, we most often, and, and most often we don't even think about it. We prefer to look at me, my needs, my perception, my theology, my views of the world. And those who don't agree with me, well, too bad for them. And that might be the best care scenario. Because most often, once again, even if we don't like it, we judge, we condemn, we despise those who are different, those who don't feel 
our view. One great example is here in Canada, we're in election mode. And there's many great party and they have different views, but sometimes when you listen to the membership of those party, you will find a common point. Their candidate cannot do wrong. And their adversary, well, they're the worst human being in the history of humankind. Sometimes they don't know them, they don't know their IDs, but it does not matter. They're wrong people. And what Jesus is reminding us through this parable is there's nothing wrong with meeting and talking with the wrong people. I would say he even calls us to bring people together, to build bridges, to try to work some kind of compromises, maybe making small concession, inviting people to make concession, to taking the risk, maybe to be judged for this work, but still doing it, still trying to bring as much as, peop as, much as possible the sheep in the flock and to create a bigger flock. And that's the challenge for all of us. Do we still continue this work of division and segmentation? Or are we trying to say, let's, let's take a step further or step higher, or let's try to do something that maybe the good people won't understand, but we will understand, because that's our calling. Once again, thank you very much for watching, for being there. I really appreciate uh, your presence. And until the next time, take care of yourself. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette. Bye-bye.